Hello and welcome to today's Textile Talk. My name is Amy DiPlacido and I am the Curator of Exhibitions at San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. I'm excited to introduce former artist in residence, Alexander Hernandez today, who will be speaking about his unique approach to quilting. We're thrilled to show Alex's work in our current exhibition, New Directions, which celebrates the museum's 45th anniversary and the five-year history of its Artisan Residence program. We are also excited to partner with two other Bay Area art organizations, the Palo Alto Art Center and New Museum Los Gatos, who are showing Alex's work in current and upcoming exhibitions. I will share a little bit more about those collaborations in a moment. Textile Talks is a weekly virtual lecture series presented by six different fiber organizations each Wednesday, including Studio Art Quilt Associates, the International Quilt Museum, Surface Design Association, Modern Quilt Guilds, Quilt Alliance, and San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. Today's presentation and Q&A session will last about an hour. So that we can continue to offer these talks for free, I hope you'll consider making a donation or becoming a member of our museum, and we'll put those links in the chat in just a bit. During today's presentation, please use the Q&A for questions, the chat box for greeting others, and the post-event survey for commentary and constructive feedback. If you prefer not to see notifications from the chat, you can click on the chat button to toggle them on or off. We respectfully ask that you be courteous as you engage with speakers, moderators, and other participants. Thank you to our 2021-2022 Textile Talk sponsors who make this series free and accessible to audiences worldwide. Our sponsors include at the platinum level, Moda Fabrics and Supplies and Quilting Daily. At the silver level, Arfil, eQuilter.com and the Torville family. And at the bronze level, Artistic Artifacts, Clover, Empty Spool Seminar, Misty Fuse Attached Ink, Nine Patch Fabrics, Quilt Mania, Schiffer Publishing, Thai Silks, and The Quilt Show. I hope you'll support these sponsors. For those of you who are near San Jose, California, I encourage you to come visit the museum's 45th anniversary exhibition, New Directions. This special anniversary exhibition highlights recent acquisitions at our museum and a series of thematic installations, New Directions, Prominently features recent artwork from San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles Artists in Residence program, which has supported the work of Bay Area artists since 2016. We are also exhibiting work by our current artist in residence, Gregory Clymer, and a partnership with the Kids and Art Foundation, featuring the works of G's Bend quilter Mary Lithia Petway. These exhibitions will be open to the public during our regularly scheduled hours through July 3rd. To learn more about our exhibitions and upcoming events, please visit our website, sjquiltsmuseum.org. We encourage you to check out Alex's work at the Palo Alto Art Center and New Museum Los Gatos, or NUMO, two fantastic organizations that have partnered with us for this event. Alex is currently showing at the Palo Alto Art Center's Creative Attention, Art and Community Restoration, an exhibit that highlights artist engagement with practices of mending, healing, restoration, belonging, sustainability, and resilience. This exhibition is on view until May 22nd. We also invite you to visit Mumu Los Gatos this June as the museum welcomes Alex as their inaugural artist in residence. This new initiative invites resident artists to mine the Numu collection for objects and stories that weave a sense of place and history into their contemporary practice. We are excited to see what new work Alex will create and show at Numu between June 3rd and October 9th, 2022. And now I'm delighted to introduce today's speaker, Alex Hernandez. Alex is a mixed media artist who currently resides in San Francisco. Born in Oaxaca, Mexico, and raised in Grand Junction, Colorado, he received his BFA in painting and drawing from Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, and an MFA in studio art from the California College of the Arts. Hernandez has participated in art residencies at Mass Mocha, San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles, Root Division in San Francisco, Elsewhere Museum in Greensboro, North Carolina, Mark Rothko Art Center in Latvia, 
the Vermont Studio Center, and in June will serve as Nuno Los Gatos inaugural artist in residence. Today, we'll be hearing from the artist on his experimental approach to textiles and non-traditional materials, and how his work has developed over the years. We're so excited to have you today, Alex, and thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me, everybody. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen so that I can, uh, so thanks everybody for joining me. It's morning right here in San Francisco, so I hope everyone's doing well. So um, I wanted to start um, this talk with a little bit of some history about my work. Um, I didn't know how far I wanted to go because I've been doing textiles since like 2007, but I feel like my work has really hit a like a, a pivotal point in 2016 uh, with this um, this uh, this art event that I did in Orlando, Florida, and so um, I created these uh, giant figures. Uh, that I call surrogates that are kind of or, or they're kind of stand-ins for a lot of different things. Um, because uh, working in in the Tenderloin in San Francisco, I've worked, I work, for, I, I was working at a nonprofit in 2000. I started in like 2015, I think. Um, working in the Tenderloin, there's always a lot of homelessness and a lot of bodies everywhere sleeping in San Francisco. And I work at a nonprofit where I kind of I work with youth. And I had to check on them all the time. And, and I always would check in the room, they'd be sleeping and there was just something very, very vulnerable about that. So um, I actually started making like smaller versions of these figures with them. And then eventually I was like, well, why don't I just do like, you know, life-size versions of these? And so that's what I did. Um, uh, I was invited to do uh, an event in Orlando and I was just like, I'm just gonna take all these I'm gonna create all these things and, and build them there. And that's kind of where my art has kind of, uh, uh, you know, hit a turning point. Um, and so uh, these are some of the figures that I did and I invited people to go ahead and uh, cuddle with them. Oh, and I also have to kind of a little brief, um, actually this happened in 2016 because this was, I had started doing these and then uh, the post shooting happened. Um, and so I was kind of like, wondering how can I do this installation without it referencing that tragic event. And I didn't wanna have all these bodies on the floor. Um, so I actually changed it up and I wanted to invite people to cuddle with these figures so that, um, so that um, there was some kind of comfort from it. And so um, this is kind of where I started doing experimenting with, um, with uh, soft sculpture. And uh, patchwork has really been a really big part of my artwork because uh, I feel like uh, growing up as an immigrant, I never felt like I belonged here. And then going back to visit Mexico, I never felt like I belonged there. And so patchwork and quilting has really uh, been a big part of my work because I feel like I can use a little bit of this, I can use a little bit of that. And it's all, you know, I patched everything together. I patched all these identities together to create like, you know, uh, like a Frankensteinian work that kind of reflects my identity that's made out of all these other identities. Um, so then I, uh, after I did these surrogates, I started making more of these surrogates at different residencies. And then uh, another residency that really kind of impacted me was the elsewhere residency, which is in Greensboro, uh, North Carolina. And it's, it's at a uh, former thrift store uh, when the owner passed away, they didn't know what to do with all her materials. So they, so um, one of her grandsons was uh, was an artist, and so he decided to start an art residency. And so, um, and she had a lot of fabric, so they they were really looking for a lot of textile artists. And so, um, I started to make some work from all the textile there, and and also I was really interested in the history of Greensboro because it used to be like a big mills town. And so I was really interested how at one point, like there were all these jobs and, and, um, and all this like history. And then now it was kind of like a ghost town a little bit. Uh, there were all these empty factories. Um, and there's also were some racial tensions. And, um, and I think it was because anytime something happens, there was always kind of like people want to point fingers. So I was really interested in how uh, 
the history of of the textiles in this town and how there was kind of like a, I made these ghost figures to kind of reflect like you know this ghost industry that kind of still haunts uh, the city today. And and I also like I created these uh, these figurative works that kind of haunted the town a little bit, and I took pictures of them throughout throughout the city. Um, and so this this really kind of you can kind of see that like you know it's kind of reflecting a little bit of my surrogates that I created. Um, and so I wanted to expand on that. And um, and I started to do um, installations that have to do with uh, all these different fabrics that I like to use. And I really I really like, um, and, and I, even though this isn't technically quilting, I saw it as quilting and patchwork because um, I'm very specific about colors and patterns that kind of go together. Uh, and so I, I um, I'm taking the the patchwork ideas of mixing stuff to a different level, and so I kind of saw this. I started. I kind of see this as like a starting point for like experimenting with quilting and how quilting doesn't necessarily, or even patchwork doesn't have to mean like you know like a sandwich blanket. It can be a you know a, a whole bunch of different things. And then um. And interesting enough, I, I did a, a year later, I did a, I did a residency at Mass Mocha, uh, which is in North Adams, Massachusetts, um, which is also a former mill town. So I, I started to do more ghosts, as you can see from this. Um, and so I was really, you know, I was keeping up with the, the, the theme of ghost and like, um, like, uh, nostalgia or like remnants of things. So I started to kind of, I went into the parts of the building of Mass Mocha that were not open to the public. Um, and so I went, I kind of did these installations uh, with these sub sculptures that I created. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that in, in the elsewhere residency, the thing about that residency is you're not allowed to take whatever you make uh, from that. You just kind of have to create stuff. And so I started doing photography there because, you know, that's the only thing I could take. And so I kind of, I've been documenting a lot of these installations, a lot of these different um, events that I do to kind of like, I think that maybe one day I'll be able to show these photographs in a different, like, in, and they would have a different life. Um, but, you know, everything kind of goes back to like patchwork and mixing patterns. And a lot of these patterns are, are also patterns that have to do, like, you know, I remember watching these patterns as a kid um, and blankets. And so a lot of times I use patterns that I grew up with in Colorado, but also like going back home to Mexico, like patterns that um, textile patterns that were prevalent uh, everywhere. So I, I started kind of mixing everything together. And then at the same time at Mass Mocha, I started, I started to experiment with printing. Um, and, and I was actually really interested in how I was thinking at the moment, well, I'm already, I'm already mixing these patterns together that I'm finding, like, why can't I do that digitally? Um, and so uh, I was using a lot of uh, dating apps and these are some of the pictures that people would send me. And, and there was something, and I think that, I think we can all agree that like anybody who does textile work or quilting, we, we love collecting fabric. We like collecting a bunch of material. Um, and I was also thinking about that with like things, photos that people were sending me, like, what can I do with these photos? Uh, and also I started also collecting like um, footage from videos of like shows that I liked. And I wanted to like really expand on what it meant to be quilting. And, um, and so like, why can't I stitch together uh, video footage or photographs, you know, like all these different mediums, like, you know, now that we're in the 21st century, like how can I take quilting in another level that can also be digital? So I've also done some video work too, but here I wanted to, um, I really wanted to play with um, the pictures that people sent me. And also since they were kind of low quality pictures anyway, I, I, I decided to pixelate them. And it was very, and I really liked the way they came out because it was already reflecting a quilt. Um, and then I also uh, found some textile patterns on, on, uh, online that I really felt went with the pictures. And so, um, and, and I also, it was kind of a big coincidence that that it looked good that they were pixelated because then I didn't have to worry about, you know, identities or like having to 
show any pictures that people maybe, you know, they didn't want to be shown. And so, um, so printing has kind of also been a thing that I've done as well. Um, and uh, here's a, here's some pieces that I sent to a show in Chicago. I mean, it's one of my pixelated pieces, but also started to expand a little bit on my self sculptures, as you can see on the right. So, um, so this, uh, this piece called Unclaimed Baggage. Um, well, I started, I started to also implement like objects that I would find in the real world uh, to create um, installations or pieces that kind of uh, like, why, why can't like, you know, how can I use an object as, as you would in patchwork? Like, you know, why can't I use like, like toys and things to kind of add on um, to the idea of patchwork? And so um, this piece called Unclaimed Baggage was really about how we all kind of have baggage. And I feel like even I, I have a lot of baggage with my identities. And so I wanted to create a piece that kind of reflected that and how we all kind of carry a bunch of, of baggage. So I kind of, I, I, went, I went through a phase where I was collecting a lot of luggage, like old luggage. And so I was just like, why can't I use that? Like, why can't I create an installation um, that has to do with that? And, and also each, each one of these piece, like pieces of fabric kind of reflect uh, like my childhood or like growing up and like, you can see the right fabric is kind of like a kind of references like Mexican fabric. And then the, the middle one really just reminded me of the, like the eighties and nineties. And I can remember seeing this fabric on couches everywhere. And it was kind of like a, a, a velour or like a fake satin kind of fabric. And then on the left, I just remembered seeing a lot of like kids, like blankets and, and fleece blankets growing up. So it's kind of like also reflects like different different versions of me, but also like different um, parts of my life. Um, yeah. And then uh, I started to create more like soft sculptures that were kind of, um, I started to use a lot of things that were personal to me. Like for example, this is an old pair of jeans um, and also some, and, and you can't really read it here, but um, on the, on the, I also use like an under, uh, underwear uh, stretch band uh, from a brand called Poppy. You, you can kind of see the, the last part. That's why it's called Poppy Jeans. Um, and I kind of, I just kind of wanted to reflect all these different things about me, like uh, my Latin heritage, my queer identity. And also I was uh, growing up, I've also was influenced. One of the things that's also influenced my quilting and my patchwork has been like denim jackets and like denim jeans and how like, I love how things kind of, I'm actually, I, this is also when I started to like kind of, um, I kind of wanted to show a little bit of, of rawness in my textile. So I wanted to, there'd be loose threads and, and um, you know, holes in some of my pieces just to kind of like, why can't that be part of design as well? Um, and I also started to use, like, like I said, like more nostalgic fabrics, like the Dumbo fabric, um, and also some patches that I've made. Um, and then this is kind of a mixture of, of some of the things that I was talking about printing fabric. So for example, the, the picture, uh, uh, the, you can see like uh, Cries in Spanish is from a meme that was, it was really popular in uh, Tumblr and like Facebook. And it was a, it was a, as a Mexican soap opera where, um, and, and that was, and I really loved how, how, how they captioned her, like, you know, she's crying, she's, she's, she's crying in Spanish, which is really funny to me. And I kind of, I wanted to use that somehow. And so I wanted to, I kind of created this quilt that kind of reflects kind of um, growing up and um, like things that I did to kind of like, um, to deal with my anxiety, um, uh, like, you know, watching TV, watching novelas, uh, watching Sailor Moon. And then I also, like I, like I was saying, like I started to mix in like real objects that I would find. So for example, the star on the right, I wanted it to kind of be um, reflective of like, I, I really like the way the face is kind of like surprised at what's going on. And then I also like, uh, for example, I added a bag of Takis, which is kind of like a, like a comfort food for me um, as a way to add all these, all these things that were kind of comfortable, but all, like, a, like uh, something that I use for comfort to deal with my anxiety or like, you know, um, 
so yeah, so why, why can't I just, you know, add some of these uh, digital things that I printed with some of the found objects and some fabrics and old pair of jeans. Um, and then uh, you can kind of see a close up right here. And then I actually sent this to a gallery in uh, Raleigh. And, and initially I wanted to have it hang on the wall, but somehow they decided to hang it hanging. And I really was really interested how, and, and actually the back, I, I don't have a picture of the back, unfortunately, but the back also has like a really interesting pattern. And so I, I was really, this is not, wasn't my intention for it to be shown like this, but I actually really like the way that the fabric was starting to, um, to drape. Um, and also I, I was also kind of, I wanted to stay away from regular quilts shape. So that's also why you kind of see it kind of weird shaped, um, kind of like a T. It kind of, and, and actually, I think that I subconsciously thought about this because I saw a quilt, or was it a kimono? I saw something like uh, that was hanging at actually San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles that was kind of made like this. And I really liked the idea that like a quilt doesn't have to be a giant rectangle or a giant square. It can be like different shapes. Um, and so you can kind of see how it's hanging here. And uh, unfortunately I couldn't make it to see this, but I would have loved to have seen how it was hanging from the back end as well, but I'll probably see it again, hang up somewhere else. And then again, more printing. Um, and, and I also started to add, uh, like, I started to collect like unfinished things too. And I, I was really interested in, in that because um, like, I, I remember going through thrift stores and finding like, you know, embroideries that were not finished, appliques that were not finished. And I kind of started collecting all these things because there was, um, and I feel like, you know, like as a lot of fellow textile lovers, like we love to collect things like that. But I also wanted to incorporate them in my work somehow to kind of show that, like, you know, show the appreciation who started the, the, the project, but also like kind of heighten it a little bit. Um, so, in this piece, I started to add like other other objects that were not textile based. So, for example, I don't know if you can. I think I have a a, a zoomed in picture. So um, you can kind of see that I also added this. It's actually a video game uh, a video game um, a playing manual for Final Fantasy. But I think that it really went with this art piece because it was kind of. This is actually, and this is another novella kind of reference to uh, soap operas. And this was one of the actors that I remember, you know, when I was hitting puberty that I kind of was attracted to. Um, and so I kind of wanted to recreate that figure again, um, but in a playful way. Um, and then also kind of mix in like my, you know, video game, something that I used to do growing up. Um, and I'm also kind of reflexing like pixels, you know, like I kind of wanted it to look kind of like a, like something from the nineties. That you were trying to download or something, <laughs> and so um, yeah, so I started to do you know printing fabric mixed with like found objects as well, and then also throughout my uh, also when I do residencies, um, I, I tend to like I, I continue to do my photography stuff because I don't know, like I, I feel like I also have to do things that maybe I can start doing photo projects as well. Um, and also to document work that maybe, I don't know what it's gonna look like in a museum or if it can live in a museum. So like, why not document it and, and, and maybe show it in other ways, maybe in a book, uh, maybe online. So I kind of um, started to document my surrogates in different uh, places uh, throughout my different residencies and even just during traveling. Cause this, for example, this piece was, I mean, this photo was taken in Palm Springs and. And I like the way that it kind of reflects um, like terrain that maybe immigrants, like I remember like family members have told me about, you know, the terrain that they have to deal with. Um, and so I, and I, and like, like I was saying, I like to collect fabric that means different things for me for, I mean, obviously the Mexican sarape is very, it's just something that's very domestic for me as a Mexican. And then also when I moved to San Francisco, um, I lived with some drag queens. So I started to also have an affinity for like 
sequin fabric and like shiny hologram fabric, like like all these different fabrics that kind of um that I, I, I at the beginning I kind of saw them as like lesser than because you know they're kind of like Halloween fabrics. But then I, I really like the mixture of both, you know, high end and low end fabrics. Oh, and this is uh, part of a residency that I did in Vermont. So I, I, I've been taking all these photos, um, but also, I mean, I'm, but I'm also thinking about uh, like the immigrant experience of like having to move from a, from, from a warmer climate to like a different climate and, and having to deal with these new terrains, um, not just like, not just like the, um, the social aspect, but also like the physical aspects of what it means to like immigrate and having to, deal with you know snow um or or you know extreme heat oh and then this is and then around 2000 i think it was 2018 or 2019 i don't remember when i did my residency um at um at the um san jose museum of quilts and textiles so this is actually the piece that i made for them which kind of is a is kind of like an, an homage to these different sculptures that you'll see in Mexico that are kind of, um, for example, like you know, like a multiple faces, um, and so I kind of wanted to show that um, in this in the piece on the left, three faces of a boy, because they all have to do um, they kind of it's kind of like self portrait, I guess, but. But also, I think kind of a portrait of a lot of uh, Latinos that grew up in the United States that maybe grew up here, but then um, going back home, they don't feel like they belong there either. Maybe their Spanish is not that great. So I wanted to create this kind of like um, uh, Frankenstein portrait of like all these things that um, that were made out of. So like, I mean, obviously the middle fabric is like the Mexican sarape fabric. Um, and, um, and then you have like the plaid on the side that like plaid for me was like a really was a pattern that I saw everywhere in the US. Um, but also, um, I would see, I mean, it's kind of a global fabric now. And then um, I um, was also interested in, I started to collect also like uh, children bed sheets at this time. Uh, like I started collecting like nostalgic childhood fabrics, uh, bed sheets, pillowcases things that I kind of grew up with that I'm like, that I would find at the thrift stores. And I, I just remember thinking like, oh, wow, I remember this. Um, and it, and it also, I didn't realize that like even things like that, like nostalgic uh, uh, items, domestic items kind of help shape my identity as well. And so, um, so yeah, I made this portrait. Um, and you can kind of see the different layerings on here. And also I started to embrace like raw edges um, to kind of to kind of show how delicate I guess my identity can be and how like I'm al I'm always about to burst at the seams, and then you can also see uh, that I I use some like sequ like a not not sequin but like um like a shiny fake sequin fabric the the one with all the little circles, um, and this is a technique that I actually created called um, slash well I haven't created it but I kind of it's kind of based on chenille but I call it slashing I kind of like sew different all these different fabrics together and then I, I cut through them so that they kind of fray and then um kind of create this like chenille type of uh type of um texture and then I'm more of a close-up here um and and also around this time when I was doing at uh my residency at uh uh here I I, like I was saying, I started to embrace like things kind of, uh, you know, like raw edges, but also like strings that are loose. And I know that a lot of people do that, but I kind of, this is kind of a point where I actually was, I think up to this point, I was really worried about like upkeep of some of my pieces. Like, is this gonna last in the museum? Is, is this, you know, like, how do I, but then I, I started to realize like, wait, like the history of textiles, like, I mean, like, even though textiles kind of been, has been kind of, you know, older than painting, nothing has really lasted as much as painting because obviously textiles falls apart with oils and, and all that. So I, I kind of, I kind of, at this point during my residency, I realized like, why can't I just have, make something that is going to fall apart? Um, and um, because, and also I remember 
finding things in the tenderloin and finding things on the street where I love the way that like fabric started to fall apart. So I, I kind of, and you'll see it later in my work, like I started to embrace that, like something's gonna fall apart anyway. So why don't I just make it fall apart in a beautiful way? You know, so, um, so I kind of been subconsciously using fabrics that I know are gonna fall apart well. So like denim looks really good when it falls apart, uh, cotton, obviously. Um, so that like, you know, like these things are gonna like, or kind of like start changing through time, but I think they're gonna look great as they fall apart. So that's one thing that I started to look at is like, um, why, why, do I, why am I worried about things lasting when I actually find things that are falling apart beautiful? Uh, and then during this time, I also started to do a series at, at the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles to, um, uh, and this is right before the, like a, two years before the pandemic, I started the series. And so dealing with like my, my HIV status, I wanted to make a current version of like, like uh, the AIDS quilts a little bit, but I kind of wanted to talk more about survivors because I feel like, especially in the Latin community, um, there's still a lot of like stigma around HIV and, and, um, and people think about HIV, they think about the eighties and the nineties and death. And so, and, and also at my job, I was working with HIV youth and I had to remind my youth, like, this is like, we live in the 21st century, like medication is way better now. And like, you don't have to worry about dying. Like, um, and especially in the land communities, you have to worry more about diabetes. Diabetes is a lot harder to manage. So I, cre I started this series of portraits of Latinos and people of color who have to deal with their HIV um, identity. And I wanted to kind of show them living instead of like dying. Cause I feel like everything from the eighties and nineties, you know, about visual AIDS and um, ACT UP were all about death. And so I wanted to make something about life and having to, um, you know, live your life to the fullest um, and also kind of reflect their identity to how, how HIV is just one aspect of their identity. Uh, you know, like, um, so I asked uh, my friends, uh, you know, what, what patterns do you like? What patterns, you know, do you feel like is part of your identity? What cartoons or bed sheets did you use? Like, like fabrics that I can start uh, to use to talk about their identity. And so, and actually, if you can see on the one on the left is actually what I started with. And, 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 and this is when I was still kind of like thinking about, you know, squares and, and, um, and rectangles. And so this is actually where I originally started. And I originally wanted to have like some of their objects be attached to the quilt at the beginning of when I started this in 2019. But then on the right is actually what I ended up making. Um, and, and I'll actually go into it a little bit because, so I started this in 2019 and then I was supposed to show this body of work in 2020. And I was supposed to show it like in the spring. And then of course COVID happened. And so I had to change everything and my show was postponed. And I also kind of felt like, um, I, I still wasn't really happy with what, like I still had time to finish these and I felt like something was missing. So then I decided to change my pieces according to what was happening during COVID. And, and I wanted to kind of show, um, I wanted to show them as like cameras or like, you know, like, um, Kind of like uh, kind of like they were evolving into something that 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 um, they were kind of adapting to what was happening during COVID to kind of show them as warriors and like you know we've dealt with a pandemic before like this is kind of the current thing you know like um I wanted to have to kind of have them morph into these creatures that were like fighters and adapted to change and um. And also, and I know it's gonna sound, I don't, I don't know if there's any mil, uh, millennials here, but also I was also kind of influenced by Pokemon a little bit, how uh, how you kind of have start as like a smaller creature and then you evolve into a bigger creature according to your experiences and you can level up to the, and so I wanted to do that with these portraits as well as like, you know, they, they, they kind of, or um, these creatures that uh, evolved into things that can't be harmed, um, into stronger, into stronger fighters, and so I also kind of like chose animals that I felt kind of. Um, not only did I choose fabrics that I felt had to do with their identity, 
uh, but I also chose kind of these creatures that I felt like kind of reflected their, you know, their, their, um, their personality, I guess, you know, so for example, like Ray Unleashed on the right, um, kind of has like a mixture of like a, like a dog, because he's very loyal and very playful. And then on the left, um, I kind of chose kind of like a, like, uh, it's kind of like a horse, kind of horse legs, but kind of zebra, because um, a very strong personality, very like, you know, very tall, very, um, so, so yeah, so I started to kind of do that as their identity as well. And then the show was pretty much canceled and I was supposed to show it in San Francisco because I actually got a San Francisco Arts Commission grant to show this work in San Francisco, but then I couldn't. So then I had to kind of do it online. But then, uh, but then later on, I uh, got, I actually have, a, I was reached by a gallery in Chicago. They wanted to represent me. And I said, yeah, and they wanted me to show uh, some, a body of work there at the Flex Contemporary. Um, and, and they asked me like what, it, they originally they wanted to show some of my sculptures, but I kind of wanted to show, I really wanted to show this work. Uh, and so I said, okay, I, I'll do it, but I, I want to show, I want to do installation of all this body of work I'm doing about uh, HIV identity. And so this is, the sh uh, and then this is another piece that I made. Um, and so I called it staying positive because, you know, we were staying, you know, as a, as a kind of play on words on like, you know, staying positive as a way that, uh, you know, you know, have good thoughts. But at the same time, like realizing that positive kind of meant something else uh, with people uh, who are living with HIV, like, you know, like it's, it's not curable, it's something that I have to deal with. Um, so, so I wanted, it was kind of a play on word on that because it means different things to different people. And this is a gallery uh, installation of it. Um, and I, I also printed these, um, I printed all these other mythical creatures. Um, uh, like centaurs and like pterodactyls and like um, griffins to kind of like show like that my pieces were kind of in a, you know, garden of earthly delights, kind of like everyone was just kind of hanging out and like um, in this garden, kind of like, a, a, even though it was a gallery to kind of just show like a peaceful scene. And, I, and, and that's also something that I've been wanting to like change about textiles is like, how can we display these pieces differently? Like you can add different elements, you can add vinyl, you can add all these other things to kind of um, kind of like change the conversation about the pieces that you're showing. And also kind of like be playful, be playful with your work. And so a lot of my work is really playful. Um, and then also I was approached um, by a friend of mine that he really wanted to use one of my art pieces for the cover of his book. So um, a nomadic press um, asked me if they can use my work. Uh, and so uh, my friend Roberto Santiago like wrote poetry. And, and so he really thought that this piece really reflected his, his also his identity of growing up Puerto Rican in the US. And so if you guys want to check it out, um, it's done by Nomadic Press. It's called Like Sugar. And then, um, and then, so at the beginning of the pandemic, I was in a really, really, I was in a very supportive relationship and I was really doing all this work. Um, and so, but it also like this, I made this, I finished this in 2020, but I think I started at late 2020. But um, I was really, wanting to make work that was reflecting what was going on. And um, I think when I made this quilt, I was just, I actually remember telling my partner at this time how like bored, but yet overwhelmed I felt about everything because I felt like, even though I wasn't dealing with any people that are there, that were like, you know, dying from it. I just, there was this like overwhelmness about it. And I also at work, there was a lot of precaution taking, but I was also kind of bored because nothing was happening. I felt like, a lot of things were happening, you know, behind closed doors or like, like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like the apocalypse that we all kind of expected. Um, and so I, I just remember thinking like, why do I feel like I'm so bored, but yet like overwhelmed by everything. And so I wanted to create this quilt made from all these things that I had lying around. And um, like, I started to use a t-shirt, uh, the Mickey Mouse t-shirt. And I also 
wanted to use um, all these remnants that I had laying around like the sequence and board. And I also kind of wanted to go back to painting a little bit. And so I actually painted the, the liquid that's kind of coming out of the board um, to add another element of like, why can't I paint on fabric or why can't I, you know, like, and also like you can kind of see that I kind of also um, it have some raw edges and I left some loose threads. And I also added some beaded flowers that I found to kind of like, um, and so I was experimenting with like, like why, why can't you have some of these pockets and quilts be useful or like, you know, have holding things. Um, and so I, um, yeah, so I, I went ahead and, and, and I want, I've been wanting to do text actually for the longest time, but I didn't know what to put on it. So this is, I kind of did this out of a whim um, just because I wanted to kind of talk about what was happening at the moment and what I felt at the moment. Um, even though like later on when I showed, actually when I showed somebody this, somebody was like, well, I don't really like, why is the title, why is the title of the piece like in the, um, you know, like you have, why is the title on the thing? So like they wanted to think a little bit more and, and he had a good point. So this piece kind of like catapulted to me to make a different series that I'll talk about in a minute. But, um, but I think, yeah, this, this piece kind of like, um, not only that, but I also started to really embrace, like, I don't know if you can see it, but like the, um, I use a lot of D-rings in some of my work too, to kind of, and I kind of wanted to show the hanging device. Cause I think a lot of times what people try to do in quilts is they try to, they try to hide the tool stick. They try to hide, you know, where, where, where it's being hung up. And I actually wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to kind of uh, show where it was hanging from and also the hanging device to be part of the design as well. And also I wanted to like have wrinkles be okay and have like, you know, um, the way fabric folds to be part of the, um, part of the aesthetic of the quilt that I wanted to make. And I actually wanted to go back to what quilting was kind of like at the beginning of, you know, when quilting started, it was, it was kind of like a, I, I was really interested in the history of quilting, how it was kind of more of a necessity. You used all the remnants from your clothes to create these quilts. And then later on in life, for some reason, it became kind of like a leisure thing where like you have really, really like, you know, very specific patterns that you create. And so I kind of wanted to go back to the original like idea of quilts and having things clash, but also like, um, you know, using, I just, and for this, I only used what was, I was lying around. I didn't buy anything. Um, and I, I bought some, actually I used some jeans, I think some pants from an ex of mine um, that I had lying around. And so the, the kind of, this kind of, um, I started to, you can see, oh, you can see some of the close-ups. I kind of started to embrace some of the raw edges, like I said, but also like, like things don't have to be perfect. And I actually embrace a little bit of things falling apart. And like I said earlier, like I wanted, now that I make quilts, I kind of go into it, like thinking about the fabrics that I want to use and how they're, how they're going to age. And they're going to, I think they're going to look great. Like I think um, like corduroy also kind of age as well. And denim of course age as well. Um, so yeah. And um, so I wanted to really go and also it's also influenced like I said earlier like I'm also influenced by like the back of denim jackets or like the way that people decorate their jeans and and I wanted to kind of make that bigger and like make it on a, on a quilt and also I wanted to stay away from quilts as you something that you use something you tell you you, you <laughs> I can't think of the word right now but something domestic like why can't a quilt be like you know be created to, for the purpose of just being shown right and so uh, around this time, um, and so I started creating also other, other sculptures uh, and installations that kind of reflected what was going on at the time uh, during the pandemic. And so you remember that we were all watching, we were all watching uh, TV, we were all binging Netflix. And so I kind of wanted to reflect that in an art piece. And so I, I made this, um, I made this installation called Beauty in the Binge because I used, uh, I used a, pillow, a Disney pillowcase of Belle, um, but I kind of gave her like a luchador mask to kind of reflect my, my playfulness. And, um, but also kind of like, you know, people were doing things like, you know, beauty, 
beauty tutorial videos online and like you know or putting on like a like a like a like a mask you know like a beauty mask you know being at home being being just like lethargic and so i i wanted to reflect that in this piece and i and so basically um <laughs> I remember when I made this, I was like, well, how, how can I make something that, um, what else can I add that that uh, kind of like turns this into a different thing? And I, and originally I did want to use like a real laptop or like, or actually I was looking for like a laptop toy to kind of reflect, because uh, some of my friends who don't even have TVs, which is binge to like watch their shows on, the, on a laptop on their bed. Um, and so I actually ended up finding this this um dvd player to kind of um masquerade as a a laptop um and then i i, I even bought like a, a sticker that had like the apple logo on it just because i thought to make it more look more a little bit more authentic but also um like yeah like i, like I said earlier like why can't you use objects from the real world to kind of interact with your quilt or your or your textiles and like um have that be part of your design and so, um, so yeah, so I started to make, to make these, uh, to make these, these scenes, you know, that kind of reflect what was happening. And so you can actually see this at, um, this piece is currently installed at Palo Alto Center. It's part of the, the show there. Uh, and originally I actually did have a DVD. I mean, I actually created a video that, um, that went with the, um, with the DVD, but it, it wasn't, the format wasn't playing well so I just kind of like it's it, the DVD is in there and something you can play it but it doesn't it shows up like really small so um I think I need to talk to a tech person to figure out how to like make the screen full um and it's actually like a video of collection of uh things that I used to watch as a kid like anime but it was also like dubbed in Spanish because I remember going to Mexico and like seeing uh seeing you know dragon ball z or something like in a different language and it was just very like wow it, the narrative is totally different in spanish than it is in english um and so and then this is where i wanted to and i also wanted to create uh these subcultures that kind of were interacting with my my wall pieces my my um you know quilted pieces because i i um i wanted to create kind of like a feeling like this is like in a bedroom like and um you you have this art piece hanging up and you're just like binging a show and this is actually i didn't use this quilt from for this piece but i used a different quilt uh that, that you'll see in a minute um for the show at palo alto center but yeah i, I wanted to create I, i've been trying to create objects that kind of like have conversations with each other in a way like visually um and so that piece, uh, Beauty and the Binge, actually led to this new series that I started in uh, last year uh, called, uh, I call it my Slumber Party uh, series. So I started to collect a lot of, I think we all did this too. I think we, we all started to buy stuff that we didn't really need. I started to buy, uh, I started to buy like, like things that I wanted as a kid that I couldn't, that I, that we couldn't afford. Um, but I, I, um, I would find them at thrift stores or I found them on eBay. And so I went and one of the things is like, my mom never let us, <laughs> my mom never let us uh, have sleepovers at other people's houses for some reason. Like that's, I don't know why, but that's just a very Latin thing. So there was always like, I always felt like I missed out on slumber parties or like camping. Like my mom never like let us do stuff like that. So I wanted to like kind of relive those moments, but like in my own way. But it also kind of is reflecting a little bit of what was happening during that pandemic, because um, there was something kind of there was something kind of comforting about staying home, and like just laying around, um, doing nothing. Uh, it felt nice sometimes not to do anything, but then at the same time, later on, it kind of started to drive me crazy, and so I wanted to reflect that with these new pieces, and so this one's this one's called Campfire Fun because I and, oh and I also started to spray paint on some of these things like I wanted to change some of these things up. And like I said, like in my in my last quote that I showed, I started to add acrylic. And I was like, well, why can't I spray paint on some of these things? And also I was saying earlier, I wanted to also emphasize the way that I think things are gonna fall apart. And, and I remember like growing up finding like, you know, like finding pieces of fabric or finding a sleeping bag and um and like 
kind of like the way that the sun bleach did kind of created a really amazing pattern. So I wanted to do that with spray paint as well. So I went ahead and spray painted this, um, this, this sleeping bag. And, and this is a sleeping bag that I actually remember seeing everywhere in like when Pocahontas came out in, uh, in the mid nineties. And so I wanted to use things that were kind of familiar to me. And I also added some embroidery. And, and the reason I called it Campfire Fun is because like it kind of remind it kind of looks like it was in a fire. And I wanted to use that as part of the design. Um, so I wanted to to I wanted to use these things that I found, but I wanted to change them up a little bit so they didn't so that I, to change them up a little bit and, and make them my own, but also um just make them a little bit more interesting. And so uh, I added some embroidery in the middle of the seams. And I also used some, I don't know if you can see here, but on her face and in different parts, I kind of, um, I actually used doilies and like, like um, also use some lace to spray paint to use as a stencil. And then this is another piece uh, again from Slumber Party. Oh, so I, another thing I forgot to mention. So part of the series is a lot of these pieces are named after like, slumber party games um so i mean for example like camp campfire fun like it's a campfire which is i guess camping is a form of sleepover and then hide and seek is another game that people used to play like I, or that i imagine would play at uh slumber parties and so uh this one's called uh hide and seek because it's kind of like he's it, this person is kind of hiding behind um uh behind this uh the sleeping bag but also, um, I was also wanting, I started to actually use, um, you'll see in the next slide, um, I even added some acrylic nails. I wanted to add different things to my soft sculptures that kind of make them either more realistic or more playful. And so, um, yeah, like why not add nails, you know, to my, to my um, and you can also see that here, uh, this body of work, my surrogates, and my wall pieces are starting to kind of merge together. And I'm also really, I was also really interested in like, this is also where I started to stay away from like wanting to make something look rectangular and like a painting. I felt like maybe sometimes we try to like have our work look as fine art as possible. And, and so like, you know, we want to make them rectangles. We, and so like, I, I started to play with these pieces because like, why can't I have the draping or like, you know, the, the folds of fabric or like, you know, the things that actually fabric, you know, do what, what they're actually like naturally do, why can't that be part of the design? You know what I mean? And also like, you know, by creating these folds, the pattern, the, the cartoon fabric kind of turns into a different, totally different pattern. Um, so yeah, so I, I'm really, I was, I'm really interested in like uh, showing, you know, the, the natural way that fabrics fold and, and, so, and then this was treasure hunt. And for this one, I, like I said, I was using, I used doilies and other, other um, stencils to spray paint with them. Um, and actually this one, and this is actually the thing, this is the first piece where I kind of started to embrace like the, the hanging of fabric. Uh, it, it actually originally had three D-rings, uh, you know, one in the middle and one on each side. But when I was hanging it, I um I hang it on two first, and I just really loved the way that the end drooped, and I was just like, why can't that be, like that can be part of the design. You don't have to, you don't have to hang, you know, a quilt like like a painting. Like you can be, you can you can hang it any way that you want. Not not also that, but you can also even like, if you get bored of it, you can turn it around, um, or you can also like hang it on one hook or hang it on only you know. So I was trying to like be playful with these a lot. Um, and also I started to use like old socks. Um, uh, Cause I know, I mean, I think we all are familiar with like only finding one sock. So I actually have a drawer of just like single socks that I, that I kind of think that I'm gonna use for art pieces later on. Uh, and it's just like uh, one of the reasons that I really love to use feet in my work is because again, going back to like, uh, me working in the Tenderloin in San Francisco, like I remember just seeing like just a pair of feet coming out of a, you know, somebody was sleeping in a tent and all I could see was their feet. And so um, I kind of, that kind of stuck with me for a, for a long time. Or also like, you know, um, 
like even like when my friends would spend the night and I would just see their feet hanging out of the couch, you know? So like, like, like a lot of things that, um, that are part of my life, I kind of like to incorporate that into my work. Oh, and then this one's called Seven Minutes in Heaven. Uh, and um, it's, again, this is part of the, the, the Slumber Party um, um, series. And this one's a little bit more about like, you know, hitting puberty and like, you know, doing things with other kids that you're not supposed to. And like, like um, it's a little nefarious a little bit, but also kind of like playful. Um, and so, and so again, here I am using the feet again, but then I also wanted to like, why can't I, why can't these have more than one person on them? You know, like these, um, these pieces. And also I was playing with like, you know, like, why can't I have like a textile piece hanging from a corner? Like I started to hang some of these pieces in, in, in areas and places that maybe were not desired places to show a quilt or fabric. And so I wanted to kind of like be playful with that and like, sh like, like, okay, if somebody's gonna give me this, this, you know, this crappy corner in this gallery, like why can't I make something that's making this corner more interesting, you know? Uh, and so um, again, I started to I started to also really play with the 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 spray paint. And some of the spray paint that I buy is for fabrics, and some of it is regular spray paint. And I kind of I kind of like the crunchiness that it kind of creates with some of the pieces because it kind of creates it to a more like sculpturally. It does some in really interesting things too. Um, and also like I love the the patterns that I'm kind of creating. I'm kind of I feel like I'm creating like these new textile patterns with these um with these um with the spray paint and i also had i kind of like to have uh some of the like you can kind of tell barbie is in this in this in this uh sleeping bag i kind of want some of that to show off a little bit but not too much and then which leads me to the stuff that i'm working now so so like, like i was saying earlier like i um i've been wanting to create um uh text pieces for the longest time but I didn't know what to put on them you know and um and like I said like when somebody gave me criticism about the other quilt that I was making I kind of like I was kind of bummed out a little bit that it didn't do what I wanted it so then I realized like well why don't I why does it have to be in English why can't I why can't I um do stuff in Spanish that kind of reflect you know all of my identities so then um so for this actually, so this was created probably at the beginning, no, no, probably at the end of the year. So last year I went through, a, at the begin at the, towards the end of 2021, I felt like things were kind of like, I was in a relationship and then I kind of, like during the pandemic, it went sour. And then I moved back. I was actually living in Redwood City at the time. And then I moved back to San Francisco and I, um, I was kind of like, I was kind of like having a difficult time at the moment. So I actually took this quilt that I, um, this quilt that I actually made like in 2010 and I just tore it apart. Uh, I, tore, I like ripped it in half and I, um, and then again, I, I, I took some spray paint and I, I put this, these song lyrics. So I also started to listen to a lot of Mexican Spanish music that my mom used to listen to growing up when I was growing, like she, she would wake us up um to music and we would be um this is how we know that we this is what this is how we knew that we needed to start cleaning or or like that we were gonna have to do chores and so i um and so i i started to look at some of these lyrics from some of these songs that um that my mom would listen to and then i realized like like oh wow some of this stuff actually like i thought it was really sappy at the moment when i was a kid and now that i'm going through a heartbreak now I understand my mom and then also realize like, oh wait, my mom also had her heart broken at some point or like I started to connect with her. And, and also I started to connect with Spanish because um, like a lot of first and second generation uh, Latinos, like we kind of have this weird relationship with Spanish because, um, you know, um, like people would make fun of her Spanish or like, um, you know, family members would make fun of my Spanish. So, so people kind of, some people will stop it altogether or, um, 
or also like we don't pay attention to like a lot of music for example like I but then through this breakup I was able to break down the lyrics and I was really interested in like some of the phrases that were happening in there so for example in this song this is from a Rocio Durcal song um and so uh one of the one of the things she says is siempre pienso en el ayer which is like I'm I'm always thinking about yesterday so I just really loved how open-ended that line was um, and how it can go with any, everything because I feel like, you know, I feel like, you know, we, we all kind of think about yesterday or we all think about the past. And so um, I started to embrace that. And, and I don't know what the series is called yet, but this is some of the pieces that I'm going to start showing. Uh, this, and actually, this piece is actually at the Palo Art Center with the Beauty and the Binge piece. Um, so this is kind of the catalyst to this new series that I'm creating, which is about song lyrics. And so uh, what I wanted to do about this, these pieces actually, uh, and this is a close up, so you can kind of see this, you can kind of see the spray paint uh, in the background a little bit, and then um, the reflective fabric that I use. Um, and I also added some appliques to this, to this piece. So, so the thing about this, these pieces though, is that like, the lyrics are in Spanish, but then the name of the piece is actually in English. The, the name of the piece is, a trend, is the English translation to, to those lyrics. And what I love about some of these lyrics is that, that even, though, even though I'm giving them a translation, the English translation doesn't really do any justice. And this is kind of when I started falling in love with Spanish again, because there were certain phrases that just like don't make sense or there, there's something poetic about them in Spanish. So no me queda mas is like a, is a song from Selena. And so in English, it, I mean, it means nothing left for me, but in Spanish, it just totally has a different, more poetic uh, feeling to it. And so um, I wanted to embrace like, uh, and these quotes, the, the spray painting, I kind of wanted, I'm also talking a little bit about like, you know, uh, graffiti a little bit and how um, I just like, instead of, instead of painting, you know, on walls and painting on this, on these fabrics. And, and this is a quote that I, like I said, I made it and I cut it in half. And I, but I also like rearranged, like I actually ended up cutting up, like I, I didn't want to use some of the same squares on both sides. So I actually um, ended up cutting and adding new pieces of fabric just to, cause I'm very like, you know, uh, ADD like that or ADHD, I guess about that. And then I also started to, uh, put in some appliques that you can see um, some floral appliques that are kind of like ref referencing like Mexican fabrics. And so I started to put all these different, all these different elements together, like my, my Americana, like upbringing in Colorado uh, with these like kind of domestic fabrics, but also like Mexican, uh, uh, Mexican appliques and like Mex Mexican aesthetics. Um, yeah. And you can kind of see a close up here of the spray paint. I think this one is actually upholstery spray paint, I think, for this one. So, so the, the letters didn't get as crunchy. And then I also started to embellish a little bit the, um, the spray paint as well. So uh, this looks so much better in person, I promise. So if you, you need to go to the Palo Alto Center to see it, because um, the, white, the, the white in here is actually like cording that I used um, uh, to put to kind of um, to kind of like uh, frame the letters a little bit. And then uh, this is another piece that, this is a piece that I'm actually gonna be showing at uh, the new museum, Los Gatos. And this is from another song um, and uh, the translation, well, estas cosas raras de la vida, uh, these weird things in life, oh, excuse me. So I, and then this one, I, I use spray paint, um, and some and, and actually I actually ended up um I actually found this. I, I started to buy like quilts that were like damaged or uh like they they started to rust or uh quilt uh, quilt fabrics that were uh, unfinished and I and I that's kind of where I'm at. I'm kind of embracing like the dirtiness of some of the fabrics that I found. And so this is another piece that I'll be showing there too. Um this one's silver spray paint and uh, and some denim. And then here's a close up to kind of, and I wanted to give that little like punk edge. And uh, I'm almost done, I promise. <laughs> I'm, I'm heading towards the end right now. Um, and this is just kind of like a preview of uh, what the installation is going to look like um, 
like at the, the at the new museum and this this quote says era tan feliz which is like i i was so happy um and then here's a close up and so you can kind of see that i use the spray paint as a way to like kind of give these little letters like a halo a little bit and and like i said i'm kind of like this is a quilt that i found that was kind of falling apart and then i also started to buy like I started to buy a lot of quilt squares that were like just they were cut up but they were never put together and I'm I'm just really interested in um in like um like doing finishing other people's work a little bit. And then this is a sneak peek of another piece that you're going to have to see later on this summer at the museum. But yeah, I think that's pretty much uh what I'm doing at the moment. Um you can kind of see there's a lot of like intersectionality of identities and like how I can use fabric to kind of, uh, you know, tell that story. And, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so I, I'll go ahead and leave it to Amy. Hey, Alex, thank you so much. That was an incredibly wonderful and powerful presentation for all our audiences. And we're just really honored to have you present in, in this format. I think you really inspired so many people today. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a ton of time. I know a lot of people have to Zoom to other meetings, but um, if people do have questions for you, where is a good place for them to ask those? Through website or Instagram? Uh, I, I do a lot of Instagram. So if you if you follow me at Hernalex, and that's H-E-R-N-A-L-E-X underscore art, that's my Instagram. I'm pretty fast at responding. You can answer the questions there. Um, uh, and then if, I don't know if somebody can write that in the, in the chat or anything, um, but yeah, you can find me there or my website is hernalix.com if you want to, if you want to email me there as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Alex, again. And, uh, we just have a couple of notes from our sponsors. So I'll pull that up right now. Thank you so much again, Alex. Oh, thank you. From yeah, from the positive comments in the chat, I know our textile talk community is inspired by your projects and looking forward to seeing what you do next. We loved hearing you share more about your work today and hope that those on the West Coast can see Alex's art in person soon. For those in the Bay Area, our 45th anniversary exhibition, New Directions, will be on view at San Jose Museum of Quits and Textiles through July 3rd. Please also make sure to visit Alex's work at the Palo Alto Art Center in their exhibition, Creative Attention, Art and Community Restoration on view through May 21st and at Numu Los Gatos for their inaugural artist residency exhibition beginning June 3rd. We've also put the artist's website info into the chat, so please make sure to follow him online. And I wanna thank our sponsors again for supporting this event. We'll be sharing a recording of this presentation on YouTube and Facebook in the next couple of days. A big thank you to Lucy Shaken from Sakwa and Samantha Lyons from SJMQT for helping behind the scenes today, as well as Karen Kinsel, Amy Davis, and Julie Erickson from our partner organizations. If you enjoyed this talk and would like to donate or become a member, please visit our website, sjquiltsmuseum.org. We hope to see you next Wednesday for our upcoming events in the Textile Talk series. If you are watching this in the future, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you again, Alex, and take care, everyone.